Hi, everybody. Sorry about that. I uh, hope you enjoy the session. Um, I, I plan to make this an interactive session, so I'd love to have you participating. I'd love to have you um, in the chat. I'd love to have you turn your videos on and say hello if, if you're available, if you're dressed, if, uh, you know, if you're comfortable with that. Uh, but if you're not comfortable turning on your video, that's okay too. Just uh, let me know in the chat. Uh, I'd like to make this as interactive as possible. This is really about having a, a conversation about the metaverse, and I hope you find that interesting. So my name is uh, Miguel Neves. I'm just going to share my slide because I think I stopped sharing. My name is Miguel Neves, and oh, I just got an announcement saying that I'm going to start speaking. That's good. I'm here. I'm, I'm stuck speaking. Uh, can you confirm that you can see my slides? Just let me know in the chat, give it a thumbs up or just say, yes, I can see your slides. All right, Saskia, thank you very much. And I get a smiley face, so that is awesome. Um, so got a few people interacting already. So this is me. I'm gonna be talking for a little bit about when we will meet in the metaverse. This is me, Editor-in-Chief of Event MB. Uh, if you're familiar with Event MB, Give us a thumbs up in the chat as well, or, or a thumbs up if you have that option. I think if you're in Zoom, you get like a little thumbs up option in the reactions. I think that's always fun. There you go. See, I can put a thumbs up on my screen. Um, so that's if you're familiar with Event MB. And this is the uh, kind of report that we created a little while ago, uh, a couple of weeks ago, in partnership with IMEX. It's called Meet Me at the Metaverse. And this is what I'm going to be basing this presentation on. I've been researching and exploring the metaverse quite a bit for the last few months. And this is really what I've been finding. And this is what I would like to share with you. So that is really the, the crux of my presentation. So first, I want to make sure that we have a sort of shared understanding of what is the metaverse. Uh, now, I'm not going to ask you to tell me you know, a full definition. But I'd love you to, in the chat, um, just add a, a word, one word that comes to your mind when you think of the metaverse. Um, anything. It can be good. It can be bad. It can be ugly. It can be pretty. It can be complicated. It can be a, a feeling that you have about the metaverse. Saskia, thank you so much. You say the digital future. Uri says NFTs. Interesting. We'll get to that. Uri, thank you so much. Anything. Uh, Jay, I, I don't know what your name is because it just says Jay Bandahar. So uh, forgive me if I just call you Jay, but uh, but let's go with that. Yurit. Okay, excellent. Uh, you're it's combination of everything. Excellent. Sounds like you've been doing a little bit of research. So we have uh, three people participating. Any others want to throw in a word about the metaverse? And, and if you don't know, just maybe put a question mark or, or just sort of say, don't really know much about the metaverse. And that's okay. I mean, that's why we're here to, to talk about that. Uh, Salvatore, I, I, I imagine you're incredibly busy, but if you have any words that come to mind uh, when, when you think of the metaverse, it would be great to see that. Ilaria, thank you for turning on your camera. Thank you for, for being with us. Any comments from you? Anything you can contribute to in terms of what you think of as the metaverse and feel free to add it in the chat all right so i see a few people participating so we're going to move on and um so i've got a, a very long-winded explanation of what the metaverse is andrea i see i saw you unmuted if you want to just add your comment in the chat or if you just want to speak that's fine too just let us know uh, but um let us know what you prefer I'll move on. So this is a very long-winded and very complete explanation of the metaverse. Um, so I'm not expecting you to learn it by heart or anything like that, but I'd like to kind of go through it and maybe unpack it a little bit because I think this, this is a good explanation. It's kind of considered to be the, the most official um, explanation of what the metaverse is. It's by a guy called Matthew Ball, venture capitalist, <clears throat> and he was the author of a thing called the extensive metaverse primer, which really is a kind of a, a multi-essay uh, website that has a lot of information about the metaverse. So I would look that up if you want to have sort of a, a more official definition. But what he says is the metaverse is an expanded network of persistent real-time rendered 3D worlds and simultaneous that support continuity of identity, objects, history payments, and entitlements and can be experienced synchronously by an effectively unlimited number of users, each with an individual sense of presence. That's a lot, right? So I'm gonna unpack a few things that I think are, are worth mentioning about what the metaverse is. So the first thing you mentioned is, is this expansive network of persistent real-time rendered 3D worlds. And I think the first important thing there is, is persistent. Persistent is really interesting because the metaverse is 3D. 
it's virtual reality. It's a world that doesn't necessarily exist if it's virtual reality, or it can be just a real uh, augmented reality when you have sort of images on top of what you're actually seeing. But this idea of it being persistent means that a few things, that it never switches off, that it's always on, it just exists. A little bit like if you think about the internet, the internet never really switches off. Even if you're not online, it's still there. It's still working. This websites are still up and people can still access them. Uh, and also persistent means something else. It means that if you buy something, and we'll get to that a little bit later, if you do something on in the metaverse, then that follows you around. That is something that you can do on wherever part of the metaverse you're in. Let's get into a little bit more of this. Um, he also mentions identity, objects, history, payments, and entitlements. And that is really interesting. And I think that's a little bit of what Uri was talking about, which is the world of NFTs, the world of objects, that digital objects that you can buy online and that you can keep with you. And I think that is a particularly exciting bit. And we'll also get to that a little bit more in, in a little bit. Um, and also he mentions experienced synchronously. Long word synchronously for meaning at the same time, meaning that people are doing things together. And that bit I'm very excited about because it's not a on-demand experience. It's not something that is like a computer game that's preloaded and you just go and do it whenever you want. Instead, it's something that you want to do with others. It's a shared experience. And that to me sounds a lot like an event, which is something that we know a lot about as event professionals. So this is where I get very excited about the metaverse and the fact that all everything that we talk about in the metaverse revolves around this idea of shared experiences and essentially doing events together. They may not be conferences or trade shows like we're, we're thinking of right now, but they're still events and they still can be planned and they still take some organization. And that I think is, is very interesting for the future of it. So I don't want to get too bogged down with this explanation. I want to also show you something that is a much simpler explanation. And this is an explanation from Meta, uh, previously known as Facebook. And it says, the metaverse is a set of virtual spaces where you can create and explore with other people who aren't in the same physical space as you. I don't think this is as complete of a definition as the one we saw before from Matthew Ball, but I think it's a nice explanation that I think covers uh, what we're talking about here quite well. And hopefully you, you, know, you found that was interesting. So I don't wanna get stuck with um, you know, too much of this theory, uh, but I thought that it was worth just kind of mentioning that and, and covering a little bit of a definition. So let's kind of, um, let's kind of take a look at some visuals of what this kind of really looks like. So who remembers Second Life? Anybody who remembers Second Life, let me know in the chat. Just say, yes, I remember Second Life. If you had an avatar in Second Life, let me know, because I'd love to know people that were actually active on Second Life. But even just remembering Second Life, I think is interesting, because it's uh, it was, I think, 2010 it started. Um, and it was, you know, a, essentially a metaverse. It was, the idea of the metaverse is that it's, all of these different worlds, but it was maybe one world of what could be the metaverse in the future. So it was an online 3D computer game where people created avatars for themselves and uh, interacted with each other and had conversations. And there was also property that you could buy on it. It wasn't crypto, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't an NFT, but it was property and things that you could buy and things that you could build on Second Life. So. This is you know, not that different from the metaverse or what most people think of as the metaverse, but a, a very early version of the metaverse, which I think is, is quite interesting. Um, and I wanna move on a little bit. So you know, one of the things that is important with the metaverse is at least for now, that this is essentially what the metaverse looks from the outside, from someone who's not in the metaverse, looking at someone who is in the metaverse or who is sort of experimenting with any sort of virtual online world, we look like this. Um, and at the moment, this is the way we interact or this is the way we can see potentially interacting with the metaverse, which is really a headset, a bulky headset. It is quite large, not something that you probably want to wear for many hours. Um, it is relatively advanced. I think it's moving very fast. And, Oculus, for example, the, the company owned by Meta, previously known as Facebook, they built some pretty advanced ones now and they're, they're advancing all the time. 
some are connected to mobile devices, for example, but the really advanced ones are, are kind of big, big pieces of um, you know technology connected to quite powerful computers. So they're they're quite interesting. They're quite advanced, and they can give you a very very interesting experience. Hopefully soon we'll be able to kind of have these sessions uh, using this 3D virtual technology. But for the moment, uh, you know, if you have the opportunity to use one of these headsets. Um, I'm sure you enjoy the experience. And just out of interest, just let me know in the chat, anybody who actually has one of these devices, who has a VR headset uh, at home or, or at the office, if you have one and if you use one, let me know, because I think it'd be really interesting to understand. I don't think the majority of us do yet. It's not widespread. It's not like a mobile device. But the vision of Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, now known as Meta, is that in the future, they'll be as common as mobile devices. So um, I think that would be quite interesting when when one of these is is as common as as what we're seeing on the slides. I think that would be really interesting to get there. But this is more what the metaverse looks like right now. Uh, and I can see Martin and NQ joining. If you'd like to contribute, uh, please contribute in the chat or let me know if you'd like to speak as well. Just raise your hand or, or give me a sign. Uh, but you're very welcome. Thank you for joining us. So this is a game called um, this is a game called Fortnite, uh, which if you're a gamer or if you've ever played these kind of things, you will look familiar. Um, if you have teenage children, you uh, may also be familiar because they they're playing a lot. It's a very very popular game, uh, and I mention it because it's really kind of the closest thing we have to the metaverse right now. Um, you know. You could argue if we're in the metaverse already or not. I would say we're probably not quite there. But Fortnite is one of the kind of leading games in this area. And this is what it looks like for the most part. It's usually um, a kind of battle game where you shoot other people in, in teams of five. And uh, you, know, you wear a headset, not a VR headset, but a headset usually played on a PC. Uh, and you wear a headset so you can talk to your four other teammates and you go on these uh, you go and hunt the other team down essentially. So it's a you know it's a shooting 3D virtual experience. Very, very popular, played online, very much a team game, which I think is, is quite interesting as well. But you know, this is quite advanced. It's definitely more advanced than Second Life. It's more of a game rather than a sort of world as Second Life was. Um, but what's interesting about Fortnite is that they also have what they call a creative mode. Uh, and I think that is particularly interesting because um, this is proving very, very popular for Fortnite. It, it, it went from being just a, a shooting game, a, a kind of violent uh, war game in teams, to having this option where you can build your own levels, build your own sort of universes or your own worlds within Fortnite. And what happens now is that people join others. People join together and look at each other building worlds on Fortnite. Uh, and so you don't really need the violence. You don't really need the the, the kind of the, the goal of the game to go and shoot other people. You can just join each other and, and look at worlds that each other has have built and explore those. And those are very popular. If you go on YouTube now and you type in Fortnite Creative, you'll find hundreds of videos, if not thousands of videos, of people just exploring other people's worlds or building worlds, etc. This is very much like Minecraft, which is also very popular for kids. So I think this is kind of, where the metaverse or where kind of the early stages of the metaverse are and where they're being developed. And where it gets really interesting for us event professionals is that now there is um, a kind of phenomena of people doing concerts and really events on the metaverse. So this is a picture of Travis Scott who did a one of the largest uh, events on the metaverse or in the metaverse. And this is on Fortnite. Uh, this was I think in August of this year. And he had I can't get an exact number because the numbers change all the time. And depending if you're counting views on YouTube and other kind of sources, but apparently he had something like 12 million people join him for a concert on Fortnite. And what that means is if you logged into Fortnite and when you log into Fortnite, you kind of choose which world you want to go to and kind of where you want to be. If you logged into Fortnite on this specific day at this specific time, you could go into the Travis Scott world. And rather than play a computer game that has the normal dynamics and you move around and you shoot or you build depending on which version you're on, kind of the, the, the creators of the game, this online game, kind of switch that off 
and made it so that you could still walk around, you could still do whatever you wanted, but you were watching a concert. And it was a 3D modeled concert with Travis Scott and music and lots of other things moving. There's a planet behind it moving, uh, et cetera. You know, quite spectacular. Um, and you would just watch this for 10 or 15 minutes. And that was the concert live on Fortnite. Uh, and this took, you know, months and months to build the 3D rendering of Travis Scott and everything. And it was very pretty. It was still something that was pre-recorded in a sense. They just pressed play and he played. But while people were watching this, they could hear the music and they could move around. So they could move around Travis Scott and everything else that was happening. There was also a moment where it filled up with water and then suddenly they were all swimming. Um, and so it was this kind of immersive concert experience. And it was really an event. It was really an amazing event that 12 million people watched. If you go on YouTube again, there's lots of videos of kind of experiencing this, which is fascinating. Um, the 12 million people were not in the same world at the same time. What happens is that there's multiple versions of the same kind of world happening. Uh, but it's really interesting to, to think that 12 million people were online at the same time in this 3D virtual environment. Um, there was also an Ariada Grande concert, which was not quite as popular, but she also did four concerts. So she actually had a tour in the metaverse, which is probably the first sort of mainstream artist to have a tour on the metaverse, which I thought was really, really fascinating. Um, and these are sort of interesting developments. And, and I think very interesting for event professionals in that sense of events happening in the metaverse. Now, what's also happening at the same time, and Yuri mentioned NFTs earlier, which I think is, is a really interesting aspect of this, is that a lot of brands are really interested in the metaverse. So it's not just Fortnite, it's not just um, you know, Roblox, or it's not just these, these worlds, but brands are releasing 3D objects. Brands are releasing clothes and handbags and things that you can use. And if you remember when we talked about earlier this idea of the metaverse being persistent, if you buy a Burberry uh, outfit, uh, a virtual or a digital Burberry outfit or a virtual Gucci bag or something like that, because it's an NFT, because it's something that you say, I own this, I have this one of one in the digital world, um, you can then take that with you to any world in the, in the metaverse. So this doesn't work yet, but in theory, that's what you're gonna be able to do. So if you buy uh, an expensive Gucci suit that makes your avatar look fantastic in the metaverse, you're gonna be able to take that to any of your metaverse meetings, any of your events. You can go to Fortnite concerts wearing your suit. You can do whatever you want. Um, and this gets quite interesting depending on which brands are doing this. So Burberry and a lot of the fashion brands are some of the first doing this, but I could see this happening with all sorts of things. and and, and um, if you have kids that are active on Fortnite and Roblox, uh, then you may have been asked for some money to buy some Robux, uh, which is the Roblox uh, currency. And this is the kind of thing that they're buying. They're buying skins, they're buying things to make their presence in the 3D world a little bit flashier, a little bit more interesting. So while this may sound a little bit strange to us at the moment, I really think that this is something worth watching and, and worth uh, exploring. And the last sort of example of what's happening right now that I think could really um, develop into something interesting in the metaverse is what Facebook or now Meta is doing. This is Facebook uh, work space, I believe, or work group. Um, and this is the kind of meeting version of, of the metaverse. So, you know, in essence, it's still a, a Zoom call or a messenger call or something like that, but then you have an avatar and you can express yourself and you can move. And if you're wearing a headset, you can take notes. Uh, you can do many things like that that are more immersive, more interesting, a little bit more exciting than, than doing a Zoom call as I think we've been doing it in a lot of things. So this is also kind of Meta's vision for the future of the metaverse. So I just wanted to mention a few things of where I think it might be going in the future. Um, Facebook's also partnering with Ray-Ban to create some pretty impressive glasses. Uh, this is more as an augmented reality product. The idea that these Ray-Ban glasses have a small camera in built in them, so they don't look very different from normal Ray-Ban or you know any type of glasses, but they would also have screens inside them. So while it's not a fully immersive VR experience where you're trying to be in a completely different world, for augmented reality, when you sort of have pictures in front or images in front of what you're actually seeing in real life, this is perfect. Um, and I think a really simple business example to kind of imagine is if you're at a trade show 
uh, and you've just met someone and you connect with them on LinkedIn, you could maybe be seeing information from their profile on your glasses as you're walking up to them or as you're walking up to a meeting or something like that. Very futuristic, very kind of, uh, you know, almost Robocop kind of situation, but it's something that this kind of technology and this kind of hardware can really um, can really uh, enable. Um, and I think that's kind of interesting to, you know, where we're heading. So I'm gonna wrap up and just kind of open up to questions or comments because I think I've been talking a lot and I want this still to be as interactive as possible. Um, this is what I think we're gonna be looking like in the future when we're at the metaverse. And, and this is what we're gonna be seeing through those glasses. I think we're gonna be seeing all sorts of different worlds all sorts of interesting possibilities. I think anything from games to business to entertainment uh, to even you know dating and, and, and things like that, I think are going to be possible and very active in the metaverse. So I hope that you you know you think that this is interesting. Please do download the metaverse report. I'll just put a link to that here in the chat so you um, can go straight there if you're interested. Um, and I'd love to get again the same question from you, which is when you think of the metaverse, what is a word that comes to mind and maybe a different word to the one that you did at the at the start of the session because it'd be interesting to understand if if there was in anything from this session that you thought was interesting or maybe surprising about the metaverse i'll leave the link here and so second life uh ask says cool okay here is the link if you copy that and Uri says, are there any companies that organize educational conferences in the metaverse yet? That is a really good question, Uri. I am not familiar with any, maybe you are. I know that there are companies working on business kind of versions of the metaverse. So I know one, for example, called Meet in VR, uh, and they do uh, you know, a sort of metaverse world uh, for you to use with your, um, with your headset. So, you know, that is just focused a little bit like that example I showed from, from Facebook. That is just focused on uh, that one particular use. Um, but I know there, I mean, you're right. Are you familiar with any that, uh, that have been doing conferences in the metaverse? Uh, I'm not, Miguel. And I mean, like your overview has been totally fascinating. And if you think about it, that 12 million people joined at the same time. I mean, like logistically, it wouldn't be possible in a physical world, right? To bring so many people uh, in one place and at the same time. But I think this opens incredible opportunities. It's a scary though, Absolutely. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's very scary, right? And uh, and I think it's, it's um... It's absolutely uh, exciting. Salvatore, thank you very much. Uh, nice that you were, were able to join us for part of the session. Um, it's, it's absolutely scary. And I think it's, it's interesting to see the big companies get involved. When Facebook decides to rename itself to Meta, you know that there's some big money being put into this. Uh, and while you know, what I've been talking about is quite abstract, and I think people that um, are involved in the metaverse are, are excited about it, I think for, for the rest of us, it's, it's sort of a little bit abstract and a little bit distant. Um, but I think it's gonna, it's gonna be a slow progress. You know, I think it's gonna be something, uh, a lot of people say that the metaverse is the future of the internet. And if you think about that, that that's pretty scary, right? If you're sort of thinking, hey, I, I have an internet site, I have a website, I, I do business, or maybe I use LinkedIn or whatever it is. And the way that looks like is eventually all those sites and all those things are gonna be in the metaverse and you're gonna have a, an immersive experience so you know, if you think about the way you use LinkedIn to put comments, to connect with people, et cetera, there's no reason why you can't do that in the metaverse. Now, what that looks like, it'll probably look like something very different to LinkedIn, right? It, it's not gonna be a flat thing where people just post text and, and, and sort of, you know, it'll probably be much more um, you know, avatar based, but it might not be. It might end up being interest-based, or it might be that there's different worlds in the metaverse where you go, hey, I, I really want to know more about a certain topic, or I work in this, you know, type of company, and, and so I'm going to go to this part of the metaverse. So there's there's a million different kind of visualizations of it that I think are, are super exciting. Saskia has a question: What about the user groups who are now using it? Is it most Asian tech people, boys or girls, or really diverse? I don't have exact numbers, but I'll give you one interesting statistic, and this may sound very surprising. The average age of a gamer, of somebody who uses Fortnite or Roblox or something like that, is 36. 
And when we think of gamers, I think most of us think of, you know, 16 year old boys sitting in the dark with their headsets. But if you think about 36 year olds and it does skew male, but it's something like 46% female or something like that. Uh, and of course, gamers are not necessarily everybody who's going to be at the metaverse in the metaverse, but I think it's interesting to think of it like that. So I think the metaverse is going to come towards us much quicker than, than we think, and, and we're going to be part of it much quicker than, than we think. So um, I think we need to create a metaverse event plan to host all kinds of events. I think there's a lot of people working on that already. So, uh, so I think you should definitely connect with them, Yurit. Guys, I think this is my time, Hans. I think you're probably going to kick me off the main stage. So I'm going to say thank you for having me. Please do download that report. I hope you find it interesting. And uh, let's let's meet in the metaverse soon. Thank you very much, Miguel. Very interesting uh, presentation. And if you liked the presentation by Miguel, also uh, look at this interview that you can find at the uh, YouTube channel of BR World. And there is a kind of metaverse itself in the um, in the platform to be found. You can uh, visit the Mebo uh, Forest, the Mebo Island, the Mebo Mountain Retreat. It's more or less a small metaverse of our own that we have here. Thank you very much, Miguel. And it was wonderful and very inspirational. Thank you very much.